the MD of Repco Home Finance joins us now to do a quick check on the business and how it's shaping up. Mr. Vardarajan, good morning. Uh, you know, your company has seen a loan growth of about 25-26% over the last five years, which has been a very healthy clip. And now we've seen the government's push on affordable housing has boosted a lot of home loan uh, companies such as yourself. Is this a rate of growth that you can um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, exceed over the next, say, a couple of years? Uh, surely, no. We, we have we have to you know wait and watch you know how the things are shaping up. But uh, surely, when uh, government is having an ambitious uh, plan of uh, uh, housing for all by 2022, uh, and also coming out with a very good scheme of uh, uh, credit-linked in interest subsidy scheme, you, you know they have already announced uh, for uh, notified towns. Uh, we expect the same thing to come up for the rural area where we actually operate. The tier two and tier three cities also will be covered very soon. Uh, therefore, we expect a very good uh, uh, growth prospe prospects in those areas. That's what we are expecting. Uh, so this 20-25% uh, growth in the last uh, four or five years we have been doing. Uh, so we, we will watch, you know, by the end of the second quarter, we will exactly come to know how many will be coming during the current year itself. And accordingly, we will uh, uh, work out the revised target for our growth rate. Okay. Mr. Vadarajan, good morning. But, you know, just to carry forward that point, uh, this 26% loan book, uh, CAGR looks impressive. What's doubly impressive is that at the same time, the profitability has also gone up at the same pace. Maybe just, say, 2 percentage point less at 24% uh, uh, EPS growth. Uh, uh, do you think, you know, both of these will keep pace going forward? Yeah, surely, you know, if, if, if you see the uh, discipline, what we have uh, maintained, you know, in, in sourcing the funds on the liability side, uh, in the last quarter, uh, there is a substantial uh, decrease in the cost of the funds by about 50 basis points. But uh, correspondingly, you know, in the yield, uh, there is only a reduction of 10 basis points that has really helped us. Uh, and that has helped us in the growth of the NIM also. You know, net return income has actually grown by about 21% during the last quarter. So that, that is really helping us. And going forward also, we would like to maintain this uh, uh, spread of uh, more than 3% and NIM of more than 4% and maintain, the, if you see the cost to income, there is a substantial uh, reduction from about 19% last year. It has now come down to 169 So going forward, we would like to maintain this uh, cost to income at a low of about 16 to 17% and maintain this uh, return on asset also about 2.2%. 2 .2%. I think it should be possible for us to maintain this type of financial in the future also. What about on the asset quality? Because the worry during demonetization was that asset quality would get hit hard, especially in segments like, you know, loan against property, etc. But contrary to that, you have actually improved your asset quality and gross NPAs have come to about 2.6%. You think you could better this ratio in the uh, yeah. current fiscal? Yeah, that is, that is exactly our aim now because, you know, in, in the third quarter, we really had a, a problem of uh, this uh, asset quality deterioration because of the demonetization effect. But that was only temporary. You know, wh what we see in the field now is uh, things are picking up now. And uh, though, though we may not be able to have very substantial progress in the Q1, but Q2 onwards, you know, we expect a lot of improvement in the asset quality further. So when you say things are picking up, can you tell us which segment exactly are you seeing a growth, whether it's loan against property, whether it's individual home loans, where do you see the fastest growth trajectory now? The, the growth driver will be the individual home loans, particularly to the affordable sections of the society. If you see our average ticket size, even now it is only 14 lakhs. Mm -hmm. So we, we focus on between 10 to 20 lakh segment only and maintain this uh, uh, this uh, average ticket size of around 14 lakh. That will be our uh, growth driver. We do not want to increase our loan against property beyond uh, the 20% level now. Yeah, As yeah, of that now, actually 20% of our next loan, loan against Raja. property. Yeah. Sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, we, we would like to maintain this uh, loan against property only 20% and uh, we would like to focus on the uh, individual home loans and particularly to the mid, uh, middle income and low income segment. Okay, so for, the, for this 10 to 20 lakh segment, Mr. Vadarajan, with the, with the benefit of rate cuts and the subsidy scheme, uh, uh, you know, uh, there, there's, we had one view that uh, net cost comes down to just 3 or 4%. Would that be right? And in that case, could we see a bit of an explosion? Uh, in this and uh, which actually may, be, may, may lead to you passing your CAGR growth of 24% as well. 
Yeah, sure. No, the, 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 you, you are right. You know, the, the 10 to 20 lakhs, uh, uh, the, uh, the cost of borrowing for the ultimate consumer, the customer, is bound to come down when you look into the yeah. aspect of this uh, interest subsidy also. And uh, therefore, there is going to be a, a demand push there in that segment. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh,